as a car shopper, we look for an SUV or a car that suits our family needs, comfort, reliability, and longevity. Here are the 10 things I really liked about the Santa Fe that might help you if you're looking into the Santa Fe. I'm currently driving a 2017 Santa Fe Ultimate with technology package with an MSRP of $43,000. By the way, these 10 things that I like also applies to the 2018 Hyundai Santa Fe because there isn't any major change to the car except for the price. So in my opinion, it's better that you buy a 2017 or wait for the 2019 model and skip out on the 2018. The 2019 model can hold up to eight passengers and will get better fuel economy. I'm gonna save that for another video. One, technology is at the forefront of every car. And with the technology package that Santa Fe offers, it is a steal. For an additional $2,100, you get high intensity discharge with light bending headlamp, automatic emergency braking, adaptive cruise control, pedestrian warning. Just the HID lamp alone is worth the price. Light package for BMW or Mercedes is already five to eight thousand dollars. So if you could get this, you'll really enjoy this car a lot. Number two, power options in this car is amazing. And what I mean by that is you get USB charging ports almost everywhere throughout the car in addition to a 110 volt outlet. There are some in the front, there are some in the rear, and again there's also a 110 volt outlet that you can use to charge your power mobile devices, your cameras, your phones, if you need to charge your phone using 110 volt outlets. My wife, after she gave birth, she needed a 110 volt outlet to use a breast pump. We didn't have one at the time in our, our, in our old car, so we had to go and buy an inverter, and she carries around an inverter. So, you don't often see 110 volt outlets in an SUV. You usually see those in trucks because usually trucks are driven by contractors and they need that to charge their tools. So, even though I have not used 110 volt outlet but it's awesome that I see in the car because I know that when I need it it's there for me three the touchscreen infotainment system is actually very responsive did I just say touchscreen yes I did it's a touchscreen in infotainment system and it's amazing over the years Hyundai has tuned and updated their infotainment systems so that it is the best on the market There are virtually no lags when you start an app or when you move from one app to another or one media to another media. The app layout is very simple and easy to operate. You won't have trouble getting started using the infotainment system app. The LCD color is vivid and it's bright. The words are clear and all your functions are within the reach of your hand. Kudos to Hyundai for making such a beautiful and easy to navigate infotainment system. And by the way, the navigation system is awesome as well. And you do get updates, you do get, I think, like updates for the first three or five years, which is pretty awesome. And it's an SD card, so updating is actually pretty easy if whenever you need to update the navigation system. The fourth thing I like a lot is the sound system in this car. This car is surrounded with 12 Infinity speakers that's well tuned out by Infinity, and this is a special contract that Hyundai has with Infinity. They have to go to every Hyundai and they have to design and strategically place the speaker so that the sound is as clear and as crispy as it possibly can, and it performs to the right specification and I think the collaboration between Hyundai and Infiniti works out perfectly for this 2017 Hyundai Santa Fe. Uh, there is a subwoofer in the back, there are speakers throughout the car, there's two in the front, there are two tweeters in the front, there's one in the center of the car, there are a few in the second row seat, and there's also a couple in the back seat. Strategically, pl strategically placed so that the sound will resonate throughout the car and there's really no like dead spots. It's clear, it's crispy, you, you hear the highs and you also hear the lows, 
very nice and clear. You get surround sound and you actually can really enjoy your music whether or not you're into rap or into classical music. Five, out of all the control options, the one I use the most is the one on the steering wheels. There are a couple control options on the steering wheel. You have volumes and media selection on the steering wheel and you also have adaptive cruise control on the steering wheel. There's also like phone functions on the steering wheel as well, but I rarely use that. The one I use the most is actually the volume and the media control button. It's within your, it's, it's exactly where my thumb should be and it's easy for me to lower or increase my volume. It's also easy for me to toggle between different modes or let's say if I just don't want to shut off my music for a few minutes or a few seconds, I have the option and it's within reach. It's very convenient for me to do that without taking my eyes off the road and so it's in a lot of cars and I'm pretty sure most other cars have cool features like this too where it's also strategically placed but I'm glad that it's in the Santa Fe and it's awesome. Number six, let's talk about safety. Hyundai Santa Fe has a five-star safety rating. There are airbags throughout the car. There are side airbag. There's also second row side airbag. There's also a third row side airbag. So as you can see, safety is at the forefront of their technology. There's emergency braking system, pedestrian warning. So those are features that you can add on to even make your driving safer. There's cross traffic alert. So it's if you're backing out and there's an oncoming car behind you, uh, there's a cross car coming from behind, then the system will warn you about that cross traffic. There's also a knee airbag for the driver, which I really appreciate. My sister had a GS. Now I did say that she had a GS. The reason is because she was hit by an oncoming car and thanks to the knee airbag, her knees and her leg were saved. Her knee and her legs were not broken. And she was pretty much, she walked out of there after staying in the hospital for a day, which, is, which isn't bad considering the fact that she was hit head on. And so um, there's a knee airbag. That's an awesome feature. That makes the car even safer than I could ever ask for. The seventh item I like is actually very minimal but it creates a very clean look to the car and it makes it very convenient for me. And that's the start and stop button. Without having a physical key, I can get into my car and I can start my car by stepping on the brake and then pushing the start button and that will start my car for me. It's actually nice and clean here. There's no, you, you don't have key clinging around with another key. It keeps this place very nice and it keeps your key out of space and it creates a more of a very modern car. Start and stop button were originally in race cars and event it got evolved into like Lexus. They had start and stop button and now it's becoming even more popular in most of luxury or high-end cars. And so uh, the start and stop button just kind of makes the car even better than I could imagine. Number eight, the automatic lift gate is amazing feature. It's automatic, which means that you don't have to press a button on your remote control. You don't have to activate it from inside the car. You just need to stand about three feet from the lift gate. And after three beep to warn you that the lift gate is about to open, it will open for you automatically. This is pretty useful especially when you have a lot of gears or groceries or equipment in your hand and you can't open the lift gate by reaching for that keyless remote. Pretty, pretty awesome feature. I like that a lot. And as a family, I think that's pretty well appreciated as well. Number nine, because this is built for a family car, the second row leg room is amazing. You get tons of leg room. Passengers in the back can feel extremely comfortable because of leg room and also because of seat areas. I'm not even sure what the exact cubic space is for the second row, but I can tell you that having been in a lot of second row, the MDX, the X5, this second row is extremely comfortable. 
Now, the only other car that I feel has even more legroom or even feel better in the back seat is the Escalade. The Cadillac Escalade is, the, they have a lot of legroom and they're pretty comfortable. And also the uh, Infiniti QX60 has a lot of legroom as well. So this doesn't have as much of a legroom as the Escalade, but it's comparable to the QX60 and it's actually not too bad. And when I say not too bad, it's pretty good. The last thing I want to send you away with, the 10th thing I like about this car, is the third row seating. The third row seating can sit two kids or two teenagers, but don't squeeze any adults back there because that's not what it, it is designed for. The seats are pretty comfortable. They're not the best, they're not like the second row seating, but they're super comfortable. Good enough for kids to haul them on a short journey. I did make a long journey from LA to San Jose. I did have some kids in the back and they did not complain. They have their own climate control, they have their own USB charging. So they were pretty happy, they were pretty stoked that they're able to kind of control their own climate. They were pretty stoked that they can charge their cellular phones to kind of keep them busy. And they didn't complain about the discomfort because it is not, it is pretty comfortable. All right, well, we have come to an end of our 10 things I like about this car. I do want to add a few more things that I think this car is pretty awesome. The engine is a 3.3 liter, but has an output of 290 horsepower. It's paired with a six speed automatic transmission and it's amazing guys i haven't been in a car that has this good of a transmission um so i think hyundai did a good job uh, and they've been kept keeping this six speed automatic transmission over the last five years in a lot of their cars so i know it's, it's working well they're not there they had to have an eight speed automatic transmission the G80, the G90, but I do know that the 2019 model Santa Fe will have an 8-speed automatic transmission to save on fuel. So stick with the 6-speed. I like it a lot. Well, that's it for me. Thank you for watching. Hit that thumbs like button. I will see you in the next video.